Hi everybody, Colin Bell here with Team Align, and I'm going to explain the differences between our 700 EDFC kit and our 700 NDFC kit. Uh, they share a lot of similarities, but are also quite different. So hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight as to the differences between the models and what one may or may not suit you best. Although these models are significantly different, they share a lot of the same parts. The first being the skids. The tail boom and boom supports are shared between the two helicopters, as well as the rear tail rotor gearbox, pitch change mechanism, and tail hub and grips. The rotor head is the same between two models. They're also going to share the same swash plate, the same main shaft, and also the auto rotation hub and sprag unit. The Nitro model comes with the same main gear, but you've got an option to swap it out for a higher gear ratio depending on what motor you're using. The differences in these two models start at the frame set. And this is done obviously to incorporate the two totally different power systems. This one is an electric powered model. All over here we've got the Nitro model. Starting from the bottom up on the end, we've got the Nitro engine. Above that is your cooling fan and cooling fan shroud. The fan is bolted to the crankshaft of the motor directly. On top of that is the clutch, which is going to disengage your motor from the rotor head, and that's going to allow you to carry the model and move it around while it's at idle without having the blades turn. And up in further is the start shaft, which is inside the same bearing block that houses the support for your pinion and your clutch belt. If we move over to the electric, you'll see that all those parts are eliminated. Because this motor is controlled by an electronic speed control, it doesn't have to be running all the time like a nitro motor. So we've eliminated the clutch, uh, the cooling fan that bolts to the motor shaft, uh, the fan shroud, the start shaft, all of that is gone. So now you've just got a motor with a cooling fan that's machined into the rotating part of the case, and then the pinion that's actually bolted directly to the motor shaft and supported by a second bearing block down here. Both the electric and nitro model share an electronic 120 degree CCPM setup, meaning that the control balls on our swash plate are spaced 120 degrees apart. Um, how they get there is done a little bit differently. Our electric model has our servos directly connected to our swash plate through one linkage rod. Um, this is done so we can raise the center of mass of the helicopter closer to the rotor hub and also just clean the helicopter up. The electric model ends up being a little bit heavier than the nitro, so any time and any place that we can shed parts to lose a little bit of weight, um, we're going to do, obviously, to maintain the performance of the helicopter. If we go over to the nitro, you'll see that the servos are mounted a little bit more forward of the main shaft and then driven by a bell crank system that's going to control our swash plate. Um, I should say the servos drive the bell crank system, sorry. Um, that's done for a number of reasons. One, the bell crank setup has proven itself to work very well in the high vibration environment of the nitro. And number two, it allows for a proper center of gravity and balance of the helicopter overall. Because we don't have a large battery mass to slide back and forward and adjust our overall balance, Performance-wise, I don't find that either control system flies any better or any worse than the other. The helicopters are both, in this example, totally different. Um, but if we take a look at both and highlight the positives of each, you'll understand why they were done. Um, on this one, number one, like we talked about earlier, the direct CCPM setup was done to eliminate parts, save weight, so this model would come out at a closer weight to what the Nitro is. When we move over here to the Nitro model, you can see that we've got the bell crank set up that we previously spoke about, which was done one, to maintain proper geometry, two, to get a proper weight and balance of the helicopter, and three, keep an aesthetically pleasing model. We could move the servo so it was a direct setup, but then you need a longer frame set in the front, the capability to move your components around so that it balances out evenly. But in this instance, we've got everything spaced strategically so that the helicopter still looks very nice. Um, a lot of people are under the impression that a bell crank setup will wear significantly faster than what the direct drive CCPM setup does. And that's actually not the case. Um, if it's designed and engineered properly, it's bearing supported and made of high quality materials, the bell crank setup will last just as long as our direct drive setup. So once again, in flight, I don't notice any difference in performance of the control system itself. These two helicopters are different. If we uh, look back at our 700 EV2, it shares a very similar bell crank setup that the 700N does, and with all of the DFC components on it, it flies very, very similar to this DFC kit. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight as to why both control systems were designed into these helicopters and why something different is used in both these applications.
Performance wise, most people tend to think that the electric flies significantly better than the nitro, which is actually not the case. The electric's a little bit heavier at 11.4 pounds, while the nitro weighs in at 9.7 pounds with three quarters tank of fuel. So weight wise, the electric's slightly heavier, which makes it fly a little bit more sluggish as far as collective stops go. Um, but what it lacks in weight, it makes up for in horsepower. We're getting about six and a half horsepower out of the electric, while we're getting uh, 3.75 out of the nitro. And again, the, the big difference or the big gap in power doesn't necessarily translate to a huge difference in performance like you would think it would. The nitro, because it's lighter, it transitions between maneuver to maneuver easier. You need less collective pitch to get the same stopping power, so right there you're pulling less from the motor. Um, and, and overall it's just easier to throw around. The electric obviously has a large amount of horsepower. It's very, very hard to pull the motor down, so it hides mistakes easier. Um, it's easier to do complicated maneuvers that are going to require a lot of cyclic, collective, and teroter pitch all at the same time. Um, for everyday flying, I actually prefer the nitro a little bit. I'm getting longer flight times of about 10 minutes versus four or four and a half out of the electric. So it allows me more time to learn maneuvers. I feel the electric, by the time I get in the groove of learning what I want to learn, I have to land and swap out battery packs. Um, as far as costs go, the electric is going to be about the same as the nitro in the run of a year for operational costs. That's assuming you're going to want uh, three or four sets of batteries. So you've got a generator to charge at the field. Um, Again, the initial cost is going to be about $500 to $1,000 different, depending on whether or not you've got a generator. But operational costs over the run of a year are identical. Crash parts between the two are actually the same. We're sharing the same rotor head, the same tail boom, same tail parts, skids, main shaft, auto unit, uh, like we went over before. So if you have both helicopters, you don't have to stock a whole lot of specific parts to one or the other, which also means that crash costs between the two are very similar. Um, to say that I like one more than the other is very difficult. They both work very well for different applications. Um, up until two years ago, two or three years ago now, I was using the Nitro helicopters in contests, but it's just way too hard to keep up with guys that are flying the electric. Um, you don't need to tune your motor from round to round. The performance and power of your power plant is not dependent on the weather, so you're getting a very consistent flight. The uh, the flight times of four and four and a half minutes pretty well line up perfect with any contest format that I've been involved with. Um, but that's not to say that the Nitro can't compete either. Um, it's also very easy to throw around. It's got a ton of power for what you need. Um, but for practicing, I think this is the way to go for me anyway. Because it has a little bit less power, I have to finesse with the collective a little bit more. I get longer flight times, so I feel like I'm allowed to learn more with it. They're both great models. Um, electric is cleaner, obviously. You don't ever have to worry about cleaning it. I might wipe that down with a rag two or three times a year just to get the grass stains off the tail boom and the blades, whereas the nitro at the end of a weekend of flying, I probably spend a half hour cleaning it uh, just to make it presentable. Otherwise, everything's going to be full of oil, which uh, eventually is going to seep in. I know all the electronics are sealed with O-rings. Um, they're supposed to be watertight or oil tight, but eventually if you leave stuff to get dirty, it's going to collect dirt and grind depending on where you're flying. So you do have to do a little bit more maintenance as far as cleaning goes on the the nitro, but uh, overall throughout the run of a year, if I never crashed one, I probably wouldn't have to replace a single part. So reliability wise, they're both very, very similar. Uh, flight performance wise, they're actually very similar. Like I said, the nitro having a little bit less power but being lighter and the electric being a little bit heavier but making up for that in horsepower. Uh, overall, both great models, and I think you'd be happy with either one. But hopefully this can give you some definition between the two and help you make a decision on what might suit you best.